Hello everybody, welcome back to more Octopath Traveler. In this video, we're going to be talking about another way to level once you hit the higher end level of the game. So you guys know, I'm level, all my characters, roughly speaking, are all in their 40s. Uh, Hanit being the one exception to that rule due to being stuck in my party until I finish her story. So... If you guys remember, I did a video some time ago at the end of chapter one about getting past that chapter one to chapter two level gap. That that massive part of leveling where you finish all the chapter ones, but now you notice that all the chapter twos are, or at least a lot of them, are now well outside of your grasp. Well, we're going to fill that gap in even further by getting you guys from wherever you might have finished there. So we'll say a maximum of 30 to get you ready for chapter three and onward. So, I mentioned this in that video where I said that the Kingfisher method, great idea, great lots of experience, but kind of a risk early on. And I noticed a lot of the YouTube videos that suggest it talk about it as like it's this huge boon because you could do it early. So, piece of advice right off the bat, don't do this unless you're at least level, let's be generous and say level 30. So I'm going to be really effing generous and say level 30, bare minimum. So let's get into how this method works. So Kingfisher is an enemy out here in Grandport. Uh, I'll give you guys an idea of where it is. Here's Grandport. Here's Goldshore, which is where Alfin's level 2 takes place. Here's Stoneguard, this is where Hanit's level 2 takes place, uh, I mean chapter 2 takes place. And that, that should give you a pretty good idea of where this area is. This is a level 45 area, kids. So if you're coming here, you're going to have to come correct. Now I've shown you guys how to make some decent money. So it's suggested that you get good weapons, good armor, and you come out here correct. There's nothing stopping you from coming out here. In fact, if you want to come out here and not instantly die, obviously you have the option of using stuff like uh, evasive maneuvers on Cyrus. That's always a good idea. Evil Ward with uh, Ophelia to make it easier to run away. Precipitance, again, with Scholar to make it to where you can't, to make it to where you have a lower chance of being back attacked. So the goal here, the general goal here in doing this is since you're going into this at such a low level, your primary goal is to break your enemy as quickly as possible. That is what you need to do. And you need to do it like as quickly as possible. I would say within the first turn. Also, if you're going into this, I would suggest beyond a shadow of a doubt, without any hesitation, I can say this wholeheartedly, you need to have Hale and Hardy. I can't stress it enough. Either that or you need to have skills or items, accessories that boost your HP. It is basically a requirement. If you don't have it, you're going to be in some deep shit. Uh, it's not, it's not going to work out. I'll tell you guys why up front. Because these, these enemies, the Kingfishers, hit for upwards of... I believe they hit me when I did this, and I was about level 30 amongst most of amongst all my characters except for one. They hit for roughly around 800 with a normal attack. They hit for nearly two grand with their meteor strike attack, or whatever, I guess meteor blow or meteor strike or some BS. They have a skill that can lower your defense and attack. So now you're going to take even more damage. So what is the optimal team that you want to bring for this? Well, obviously... It depends on how you're going to go about this. But I'm going to show you guys what I primarily did. So we're, we're just going to make a team. I have uh, Primrose. She is cur she is permanently a scholar. So we're going to put Hanet because she's instantly stuck in my party, right? So I have Primrose, who is a scholar. So we're going to take her. I have Ophelia, who is a cleric uh, with the side of Dancer. And then we're also going to bring Therian. Or Tressa. They're both thieves in their own right. But this is something that's really important. So why would you want this? You want this kind of a setup. Because you have somebody 
you have two people who can perform moves that are against their weakness. Kingfishers have three weaknesses. Wind magic, spears, and bows. Which means that you want to either have Ulbrich or Hanit by default in your team, or somebody else who can do it. So this works out well for me, because I have two people. I have three people in this party who will hit weaknesses. Um, I have Hanit, who will hit basically all the martial weaknesses. I have Therian, who is guaranteed to hit... Let me think. He's guaranteed to hit them. one of the martial weaknesses in the wind weakness. Guaranteed. So right there, I have two characters who can do this. You also want to bring a thief because they can do donate BP. And that's kind of integral to what you're going to be doing. Because you're going to be relying on your scholar to deal shit tons of damage and be boosted while they're broken. So I am obviously at the right level for this. But I find that just showing you how I typically played this out is kind of important. So great thing about this strategy is you don't have to go very far out of town. You can leave town and do it. And your first encounter you're going to run into as soon as you leave, when you leave and walk back and forth, is going to be King Fisher. So you're not really going to have to go that far to find him. Um, is there anything else? Be prepared to take damage. Uh, you, I've shown you guys how to make pretty good money overall with minimal effort. So really, there's no excuse. You should have the money to buy weapons. Honestly, you really should. There's no excuse now. I provided the, the tools in place. And this is a pretty known tool. So you should have the tools in place to at least have the weapons to do the damage. And once again, once you start getting the levels and obviously Hale and Hardy, you should have the HP to survive a hit. Obviously, there are some problem characters. Ophelia, she has a risk of getting KO'd pretty easily. She got KO'd a lot. Primrose, in general, has a risk of getting KO'd pretty freaking often. Cyrus is a little better. I think he does pretty decently on HP. I didn't see him get KO'd as much. So let's go, and I'm going to show you guys. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm at the level to do this. I'm 40 across all my characters. So I'm not the best example of this, but actually, let me, skills, support skills. What do you, you are, oh, oh, you don't even, does anyone even, no one even has it. No one even has the thing that I thought they would. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so you get into the fight. This actually works out in my favor because I got Therian up first. So the goal here with having a sorcerer, I mean, that's, I'm sorry, a scholar, is that they do big damage whenever they are, compl whenever they spend a crap ton of BP, right? So that's kind of what you want. I want to spend a bunch. However, I also don't want to use it right away. So we're going to go trade, we're going to go trade Tempest, and we're going to hit them right off the bat to bring them down to three. So they only just normal attacked me there. So that was actually pretty lucky. So to be on the safe side, we're actually going to go Dancer. And we're going to go Peacock Strut. Because we're really banking on our Scholar here to do the majority of the damage. That's, that's the way I've done it. I kind of rely on my Scholar doing most of the damage. As they have the high... They have... Scholar tends to have the highest potential. Honestly, I've had the best potential in doing crap loads of damage even better we're not even going to waste our time with the turn because we're, they're not broken so it's not even really worth our time Hanit here is going to do what she always does she's going to go for arrow storm she's going to break them because they only need three and i'm pretty much guaranteed to hit them three times anything more than three i find tends to be a little bit shaky for that oh Damn it, why did you go first, woman? No, don't go first. Jesus. That's like the opposite of what I want right now. Don't go first. Damn. You messing up everything going first. What the hell's wrong with you? Uh, merchant skills, donate BP. We're gonna donate it to you. We don't want her, we wanted her, I wanted her to get the buff, to get her, uh, her game up before then. I'm not really worried about Hanet 
There we go. So now that will last long enough. And hell, you know what? Hunnit's already going to do good damage no matter what. So we're just going to go for like a uh, cross strike. There we go. See? A little extra damage. Doesn't hurt. Ow. Good lord. Yeah, see, that's what happens, guys. They can hit you really hard. Told you. Defend. You know, we're just gonna spend it. This is, like, not the most optimal path. Just because the turn order didn't work out in my favor. You know what? Screw it. Dancer. We're gonna go Lion Dance. Because they're gonna get broke this turn. There's no... There is no uh, way around it. They're getting broke this round. Uh, they might not be dead next round, but they're going to get broke. Uh... There we go. Alright, cool. So this is the part where I basically bend them over a table and take them for all that they're worth. Firestorm, let's go. Boom. I dealt just over 5,000 damage in a single attack. And look here. You get 800 gold, roughly give or take. You're getting almost 600 experience per battle. That's a lot of experience. This is a great way to bring up characters that you want to level in a great way to level characters that you want to work on. That is how I've done it. I find this strategy to be the best because you still have at you have access to a healer, obviously. And here's the thing about this strategy I need to emphasize. This is not the only way to do it. There are dozens of ways you could create a really effective team comp. And this team comp is only is only uh, how do I say this? It's valid because of the cross classing to some degree, right? Cross classing kind of makes this game ridiculous in a sense because you end up with a lot of weird or just odd combinations where you could bring characters into almost any situation. This is just the team comp I chose this time around. This is just the one that worked out. Obviously, with my team comp, I could easily switch in. Uh, Tressa with Therian, I could bring in Cyrus instead of Primrose, I could bring, I could technically bring Alfin instead of Ophelia, but I wouldn't because I lose out on Dancer and I'm not turning him into a Dancer. I just don't, I don't have an interest in it. I've kind of decided on these classes on being what their team, what the team comp is going to be and I don't really want to mess with that too much. Anyways, this has been the Team Fisher method. I hope, uh, the Kingfisher method, I hope this has been helpful to you to some degree. I kind of wanted to at least show you guys sort of my idea. And obviously this can change depending on how you've played the game. If you've already cleared your first character complete story and now you're doing everyone else's story, you have way more options because now anybody here can be in that slot that I don't have access to because I have not completed Hunnit's story. Anyways, guys, I hope this video has been helpful to you. I've tried my best to explain... I guess my methodology to doing this and show you guys sort of my strategy and idea for strategy when it came to this fight. Um, obviously, like I said before, this is going to be entirely based on how you choose to play the game and how you've sort of built your teams. This is just sort of a team comp that gives me a lot of versatility and gives me a lot of buffs to do some really goofy shit in this game. Anyways, guys, stay tuned till next time and I will see you all later.